Hello, this video is about using the UA compliance test tool for advanced debugging. And this means debugging a session between a client and a server. So in this video, we'll take a look at uh, basically what advanced debugging means, using the CTT as a packet sniffer instead of something like Wireshark, uh, setting up and configuring the CTT, observing the calls between a client and a server, and then perhaps modifying packets that are being sent back to a client. The CTT as a packet sniffer. So if you looked at the client testing video, you, you'll see a lot of the same information in here. The client sends a request to the server, which goes through the CTT, such as a read or a write or a browse. The CTT simply forwards that message to the server, and the server simply processes and responds to that request. But that response goes back through the CTT. The CTT can log that call and forward it back to the client. So at this point, the CTT has done nothing to the request or response except log it in a trace window. The trace window is what you see here. So we can see every call that was sent between the client and the server. For each call, the blue line indicates the read, which is what's visible on the right hand side. Every detail of a request and a response is visible. You can drill down into the infinite detail of a request and a response. And this is where you can do your investigative work. So for example, if you had a client that was displaying a value of 10, but you expected to see a value of five, well, you could use the CTT, go into this trace window, find that read, and look at the raw values that the server is returning back to the client. So let's take a look at how to set up and configure the CTT to act as a spy. So here's the CTT. We're going to click New Project. It's a client test. We'll give it a name. Let's call it Spy. We'll specify a location. And then we'll click OK, and it'll take a second or two to copy all of the test scripts and certificates over. And here we are. We've got the project. So let's go into the settings, and we're going to specify two endpoints. So the first is the server that we will forward messages to, and the second is the endpoint that the client will receive. So this is the CTT's endpoint. And that's it. Configuration is done. Well, now we need to go to the library and run the start find servers intercept to force the endpoint, the CTT's endpoint, into all calls where there's endpoints. The CTT is now ready to receive a connection from the client. If we don't run that script, then when the server responds with its endpoints, if the CTT simply forwards them to the client, the client will connect directly to the server and bypass the CTT. So let's take a look now at typical behavior where the client is doing something and we want to view those results in the CTT. So here we have, actually we have a CTT operating as a client. So this would be your HMI or your, your specific client. So I'm going into the settings and I'm going to give it the endpoint of the CTT spy. So we'll click OK. And I'm ready to do a client thing. In this case, we'll do a read. So a client read. And this is reading from the server. So the test completed. Everything looked good. But let's go to the spy CTT. And there's a lot of information in the trace. Here's the calls that transpired in that test. And we can see on the right-hand side a lot of information. We can see all of these nodes being read. We can drill down and see every detail of the request, of the response. There's a lot of information in here. There's no secrets. You may run into situations where, for example, a client is behaving in a certain way, but you're having difficulty replicating the scenario that's causing this behavior. 
maybe the example of the, the client displaying a 10 when it should be a 5. Well, maybe it's so difficult to accomplish the, the scenario that you can use the CTT to fake that scenario and to simulate it. So this is where you can use the injection. So let's take a look at how this was done with the CTT. So we've got a client on the left, which is a CTT that tests a server. And we've got a CTT on the right, which is our spy. So on the right hand side, we can see all of the log, we can see the read, we can see the response, and we can see that the response said it was good, we can see the values, etc. What we're going to do is to do some injection to force the client into a particular state. We're going to make it, we're going to make the read fail. So we're going to make it fail with a bad internal error. So we'll run that script. So now it's waiting for a read. We'll go back over to our client and then we'll run the read and everything failed. Bad internal error. So in this case, it was a very simple injection, but you can elaborate on these tests to make them quite extensive to, to uh, do a lot of different things. Maybe the situation is that you have to do a read multiple times before something occurs. Well, you can do all kinds of different things. So here we've cleared the injection, so we're back to native mode and everything's back to normal operations again. You can go back to the CTT and re-inject and uh, really go to town on doing the testing. Other videos of interest may be to learn how to do testing of a UA server, how to do testing of a UA client, or how to develop your own scripts for testing your client or server. And the last video of interest will be to automate compliance testing. Whether it's a server or a client, you can integrate the CTT with a CI system such as Jenkins. We hope you've appreciated this video. There's a lot of information in here and the power and flexibility of the advanced debugging of the CTT should not be underestimated. Uh, you will be surprised at how much flexibility and power the CTT gives you to, to do this debugging and to simulate these use cases so that you can truly create a robust, efficient, and high quality client. If there's any questions on this video or the concepts contained in it, please give us a call or email at the address shown on screen.